Hey guys, I'm back. Woo! So, um, yeah, I was doing the recording for this episode. I actually did it completely, and the audio is completely lost. So, it's a little disappointing. I figured out the dark orb thing. So, yeah, it's all good now. Um, the reason is because I didn't have the required stats to use it, so I could equip it to my tune slots, but I couldn't use it. The other thing I have equipped is Dark Weapon, which imbues my sword with darkness. And that's pretty cool, it adds some dark to it. Don't want to swing too much, I'll end up hitting the Herald. <laughs> yeah. So don't want to do that. Um, basically, what I'm doing now is I actually went through and pre-recorded some stuff, because I'm actually going to go on a trip this weekend. And so I just pre-recorded stuff for the next week, just so you guys will have it up. Um, I'm trying to be better about stuff like that. And um, basically we missed an entire area. So basically all the stuff from Hyde's Tower of Flame. Yeah, you saw there's a little sneak preview of some of the areas that I've already gone through a lot. But Hyde's Tower of Flame... Uh, I went in, I went basically that way to the Cathedral of Blue, and I fought the Dragon Slayer in there. Oh, sorry, not the yeah, the old Dragon, the old Dragon Slayer. Because this is the Dragon Rider was here, um, and I fought him, and things happened, and I actually died in that fight. Oh, I know, right? Um. I will show you the clip because I'm not a uh, I'm not that bad about it. I, I will I will show you my deaths, um, at least the ones I am able to record. Um, that way I went, and it leads to a place called No Man's Wharf. So um, basically, what I'm going to do is cut to a character who hasn't gone through there, and I will basically catch up with you guys when that character gets to No Man's Wharf. All right, see you there. Alrighty, guys. So this is uh, the character that we'll be doing this section with. Her name is Lady Catherine. Um, I came up with this idea of just like a female, like noble woman who's just like a, a really badass, um, like sword swordsman weapon user. Uh, right now, I'm wielding the Morning Star, which we which we actually found on our other character right at the beginning in Majula when we went uh, off the cliffside there. Um, she's rocking the Silver Eagle Kite Shield because this character actually hasn't gone through the Forces of the Fallen Giants yet to pick up the Drain Lake set, and the Falconer armor. Even though my starting stat was as a knight, um, just or sorry, not as a knight, as a soldier or warrior or whatever it's called. What is it? It's warrior. Uh, I'm wearing the knight set just because I think it looks better and it's kind of cool. It's got the little uh, nice little falcon right on there. The falcon ears. And uh, yeah, and that's pretty much what we got. Um, I haven't even switched my Estus. This is a brand new character. Um, so yeah, like I said, the video recording. Yeah, sorry about that. But I'm going to basically do what was in the recording as this character. I'm going to also include clips of me doing it as the character because I have the video footage. I just don't have any audio. Which I was going to just dub over it, but then there's sections where I talk to people and it's really bad. So, yeah. First things first, what I did in the video is I went down here. And uh, you can see I actually didn't raise the platforms in this room. Um, the reason for that is because when I was trying to catch up, I wanted things to go quickly. So what I did here is when when the Dragon Rider comes in, he runs at you like this, and he gets to about right here. At that point, I'm standing here still, and I run, and I roll past him right here, and he swings and falls off there. Now, I didn't really go as planned. He didn't really fall off immediately, but basically, uh, as he recovered, he was standing on this corner, and I just came up and stood right about here, like right on top of him, and he just rolled right in. So... It, it worked out in the end. Alright. So, one thing that I definitely notice immediately is that uh, this character I have right now does a lot less damage. 
like a lot less than uh, than T Strat does the Hexer build that I have, uh, and that's surprising considering that I'm I'm just you know throwing around strength weapons here, um, but it's also not surprising because I'm actually a lot lower level and I don't have anything upgraded. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna actually use the summon sign for the Masterless Glencore. And he's going to help us as we get through this next area. Where we're going is uh, the other side of this room. Now, it leads to the Cathedral of Blue. Oop, I missed. So here, i got to focus this guy. Hopefully the other guy doesn't... Oh, yeah, he's coming. Jeez. Ooh. I'm actually doing pretty decent considering I, uh, I'm playing this really safe. So, when I did this on T-Strat, and I will put this footage in because it needs to be seen, uh, I did this at first without this uh, support guy. And, uh, yep, I straight up died the first time. So, that'll be, uh, that'll be shown, I think, right... Uh, right before, I'm gonna put this, I think I'm gonna put it right before I go in and beat it on this character. But you wanna just go over this way. Take out some of these guys. This is a different, um, play style than t strap would be at this point. Um, one of the notable things that I was testing out right here was my, uh, was my dark weapon ability which basically infused my weapon with dark magic um, I was able to three shot these old knights so that was really nice and I explained how like even though it expires kinda quickly the fact that it has a bunch of uses makes sense considering you use them um, you use about half of them to clear the area and the other half oh, that's the first time I got hit by these guys okay use the other half to um, to actually Oh no! Did he just... He just fell right off the edge. Well, that... That puts a pickle on things. So I guess we'll be fighting... This guy the same way as uh, I did the first time. And I died on the other leveled up character the first time. I was playing so poorly. And this character is not ready to take on that guy by himself. Um, anyway, this is the Cathedral of Blue. <laughs> we might have to change up some plans. I do have an FG. If I don't succeed, what I'm going to do here, if I don't succeed the first time, I'm just going to show the clips of my success, and then we'll just move on, because I know I can handle the next area. Um, if not, if I can't handle the next area, then I'll probably just level up real quick. So, I, Or... No, actually, I have a surprise for the next area, um, but I just want to show this part. And welcome to the editing phase, where I'm actually going to put back in the film that I recorded previously, but it was unable to show due to audio problems. So, here's the first attempt at the Dragon Slayer. Uh, as you can see, I didn't get hit by that initial thing. I'm also doing tons more damage. That thing clipped me. I was unsure at this point why that happened, um, and then I just lost it here. He comes in, hits me with that. Uh, I'm still talking, and I didn't even roll. Bad things happened. So that can show you how fast that you can just die straight up from dragon from the dragon slayer. Um, this is my second attempt. As you can see in this in this instance, I actually have my summon with me, so I didn't make that same mistake. Um, twice with that. Once again, I have my weapon charged with dark magic. Still doing about 150 one to 180 against him. Don't know how that hit me. I grabbed my uh, health, and right now I'm just I'm really just playing poorly. Um, there I got lucky. He actually switched targets to my summon, which is another good use for the summon. Just as you know, cannon fodder, if nothing else. And for some reason, I just cannot roll out of these things. Um, it's I'm playing really poorly. So here he jumps up, I back up, usual stuff. Um, we'll go over this in the in depth in the next fight when I do it uh, again. But as you can see, I'm just sort of.
playing really cautious because I keep getting hit and then that's causing me to get hit more and it's just really bad. So I basically wait for him to turn and start attacking the ally. Then I get a little braver and I uh, rebuff my weapon and go back in. This point I've probably used about like four Estus flasks and he's not even half health. Um, we've managed to stagger him three times in a row there and we got tons of damage off and now we're finally back in this fight uh, at this point I'm just like going for the win here but I need to get the less hit and there we go so victory achieved we got someone a buddy so many fell. okay how about the wicked witch someone the wicked witch. I hope she's green I hope she's green that would be that would be awesome Come on. And uh, the reason I like to summon the NPC for this fight, um, oh my gosh, is she? Oh, nice. Uh, she's actually wearing the set that I want my character to have at the uh, at the end. So that's actually really cool. A little preview of what I want to look like with my hex build, except not green. All right, first things first. Dodge. And I never really get hit by that. Um, I get hit by it if he does it like here. But uh, yeah. Oh, so here you just want to roll away. He'll uh, butt slam the ground. Just yeah. She's using a whip, which is kind of cool. Um, little preview of the the how that weapon works. The first time I died in here, um, with, with a T-Strat, it just, it was awful. Um, ooh, actually took quite a hit. It's not really helping too much. Come on, hey buddy. Hey buddy. Look at me. Wow, he, he's, he's fixed. Well, if he's fixed. Oh. Alright, see that's the bad thing. I got into a bad roll with with this guy um i i basically like as soon as he poked me i tried to roll uh, after i was already hit and it basically made it to oh gosh Ooh, i'm okay and basically you roll away too soon and that's a problem let's actually just uh get to full here i think that's probably a good idea Oop. There we go. Back up. And you can see there, she took a lot of damage. Oh gosh, I'm taking damage too. This is actually not turning out too well. Yeah, see, 358. Whoa. Uh oh, uh oh. Shouldn't have healed. Oh boy. Woo -hoo. This fight is hard when you're uh, when you're a lower level. Do not get hit by that. That's a, that's a really heavy hit. Actually, just don't get hit. Is the is the point of this fight? Um, you get hit too many times, like me, and and it's just over. It's a long fight, and it's probably partially because I'm too weak for it, but. Alright, so this guy is staggerable by the way, and the uh, the NPC is amazing at actually staggering. Oh gosh. See, I rolled too soon. And that's what I was talking about before. Let's pop another one real quick. Come on, come on. Alright, I feel better. I feel better. Hi. Let's see if we can... Oh, we got his attention. Do not get hit by that. It's simple enough to dodge, but it's also one of those things like it will hit you eventually if, if you play this game long enough. Oh, we're getting closer. I can't get greedy though, because this guy could still kill me. Oop. There we go. Man, that was a long fight. Not used to that. Alright, I didn't mean to do that, I meant to, I meant to wave. Later, Wicked Witch. That's a really cool build. I kind of like that. 
All right. So that is the Wicked Witch, and that was the old Dragon Slayer. Now I haven't played Dark Souls one, but everyone who I've ever watched commentary wise has mentioned this that that is a um, pretty much a replica of the um, I think believe from Dark Souls there was a boss Ornstein I think his name is and uh, he's got the Leo ring and stuff which makes everyone think that that's who that was here I want to show off the hide helmet now this helmet um, as you can see it goes with the falconer set pretty well it does not go with the wanderer set but um, it actually fits a lot of uh, armor sets that you know you might want to look into if you want a full face helmet and we'll actually find a full face um, or full body thing in a, uh, in a little bit this is no place for one such as you be gone you are not needed this is Targray he is the leader of the um, blue sentinels covenant if you come to him with a token of fidelity that's how he Let's you into his covenant. Uh, I had one on T Strat and I showed that a bit. Um, but we, we left the covenant pretty much immediately. I didn't do too much in it. I just showed what kind of what things he sells. You also get the um, the gesture for the dual bow. And in here, if you're part of the covenant, these stones will let you duel other players. So that's something you might want to look into. Alright, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to go back to the bonfire after the dragon slayer where I started this on uh, this character and I'm gonna run through basically the next portion that leads to um, the last area that I went through during this episode and then what I'm planning on doing is I'm actually going to activate a bonfire ascetic in the next area and I'm going to go through it again at the equivalent of Next Game Plus on T-Strat. And you'll be able to see uh, the area again. I'm also going to make sure that I don't like spoil any of the uh, stuff that's coming up either. I'm just going to basically just go through the area. Whew. Come on. There we go. Yeah, so imagine doing that, but in three hits instead of four or five. These guys are, are, aren't are too bad to deal with. Um, you can safely get off two hits against these these guys every single time. You just two hits and roll out. Uh, of course depending on your damage you might be able to pull off another one and your, and your weapon speed is a big deal as well but I mean even with big um, big weapons. Two hits it's pretty good. Here's an old knight halberd, which I think is a pretty cool weapon. I can't use it obviously to its full effectiveness because it requires 20 dexterity. Check this thing out. It's a beast. Look at it. Yeah, whip it around, and, and if you have the requirements, you will be a lot faster at using it. Um, dexterity doesn't work like strength. You can't just two-hand things to make them better. I love that. Ooh kind of a cool little animation there Oop. it makes you uh, overweight All right. dodge one two three that's it and then one two dodge away uh, if you're really uncomfortable with it I recommend double dodging just to get out of the range but be sure you got enough stamina um, because that's the only problem that you might have. That direction, it's pointless. Dead end. Regret ahead. Yeah, there's nothing up there. There's this guy, though. One. Two. Yeah, and then sometimes they do this fourth stab attack. Just, just watch out for that. Oh, a little too soon. Alright, I'm going to do one hit there. Because I knew I was going to get hit for some reason. Pop a life gem and kind of heal it up. You can also actually just like walk past them. Uh, and you know sometimes you can just get away without even rolling. They're slow. I don't recommend fighting the uh, 
Well, that's a nice little room, isn't it? Um, a little elevator here. Pressure plate. I don't recommend fighting the giant club bashing dudes. Um, there's one that I fought in the uh, High Tower of Flame, and the, he drops the Sublime Bone Dust. Later on, those guys will come back, and they'll be faster, and they're just they're just a pain. They're definitely the hardest ones, in my opinion, to fight. Nothing that way. Alright, one thing to note. In the area that we're in right now, we're standing in water. So, our speed on everything is reduced. See how I, I couldn't just like walk away from that? So, I gotta be careful here, because I don't have the stamina. Like, I, I can't just run from the- oh gosh. Right after I set up to be careful, you can also come in here, and I don't think they can chase you in here. Just kind of heal up. Bait out some attacks or something. Come on. Let's see, I, c I couldn't move out of the way. Because I, I didn't have the speed, because I'm in water. Way down a bit. Uh, the other thing to note about water is that you will actually take less fire damage, but more lightning damage. So, for those of you who use miracles and shoot lightning spears, try to fight in water, and it should help you do some more damage. Here we got the knight set. It's a pretty sweet set, I think. Um, very, very uh, sturdy looking, you know? Pretty cool. And its helm looks like that, and it's an open helm, and... Honestly, uh, the helm kind of made me not like it as much, but I can pop on the hides helmet. Look at look at that. I'm actually gonna wear this for a while, and it's actually just at the proper weight, um, 69.5 percent, which means I'm not fat rolling, and I can run around like normal. It's kind of a cool looking set, you know. But yeah, with the hides helmet, that's what I was saying. It goes with a lot of armors and stuff. Um, I, I probably will be posting some footage of other characters as we go through here. Um, most of the time it's because recordings failed or something bad happened. I actually lost au the audio for this last part, which is why I felt it necessary to go through here again. Because I'm actually going to talk to somebody very important. Who is this? What is it? I don't know you, and you don't know me. Things are better that way. <laughs> you are an odd one. Normally, people keep a safe distance when they see this mask. But you... I'm called Lucatil. From the land of Mira to the far east, across the mountains. They say Drang Lake brims with powerful souls. And so I came to claim my share. But what a strange place. Even the rumors did not prepare me. So this is Lucatil. And this is, this is literally the only reason I actually had to go back through here with a different character. Because I want you guys to hear this dialogue. She has a really cool quest line. Um, basically you talk to her and then she'll help you out in the area you talk to her in. Also she appears in some other areas too. If you basically use her and she doesn't die in three different of the four areas that she is in, three of the four areas, um, y then you will get a reward at the end of her quest line. Uh, and just like everything else you can get the reward in a different way but it's more fun to go through with the quest line I think. So we'll be doing that, um, and I've already done this on the other character, so I couldn't just like pop in here and show you the dialogue because after you talk to her all the way through, she'll actually disappear from this area. So yeah. You are an odd one indeed. I've always made a point of avoiding people, while you've made a point of engaging me. I can see that you are on this journey. If you require assistance, I will help you. I come from Mira, a land of knights. My sword is always ready. Don't hesitate to call upon me. Whatever happens, I won't be missed. 
So that's a little sad, you know. She's like, I won't be missed. It's like, I'll miss you, Luca Teal. Um, so you can kill her, and she will drop the thing that she gives you at the end of her quest line, which is uh, I don't actually want to say what it is, but basically you don't don't do that. It's not worth it. Um, you'll just finish the quest line anyway, and she'll give it to you. All right, let's light this bonfire, and uh, basically that's that's pretty much going to be it for Lady Catherine. And uh, I'm probably gonna, you know, I'm gonna probably catch up to my character and then just like have Lady Catherine hang out just in case, you know. Like I'll go through an area with T Strat and see if it, um, see if it works and uh, if the recording's all good. I do want to play through mostly with um, the character I made originally, just because I have a cool idea with that character. But um, yeah, thanks for tuning in for Lady Catherine, and when we come back. I will be back on my other character. See ya. And we're back with T-Strat. As you can tell this area, I've already cleared it out before, and Lugatil has actually gone missing, which means we've already talked to her here and everything like that. Um, so what we're going to do here, because the area is already cleared, I've already cleared a the boss in the area. The only way to put the boss back is to burn one of these. This is a bonfire ascetic and even though it'll refresh the area it'll also make enemies stronger. So this is something I don't really like to do uh, especially on lower leveled characters but you know what's done can't be undone. That's the game's way of telling you you have to live with your choices. Alright, this is Ooh, should I summon this? This is No Man's Wharf. Welcome. Now, originally that boat is over there. I will show you guys how to move that boat. Um, so it's not going to be a big deal. We're going to be using our hexes here because, um, well, you'll see. We'll need them, basically. Alright, let's do this thing. Now, when you first come to this area, this guy tries to kill you. You'll definitely want to do that and take care of him. Now, these two guys are pretty well synced up. One guy will shoot fire. The other guy throws what appears to be some sort of tar. So, that's kind of interesting. So, the, the flames basically ignite the tar and you get you get attacked by that so that you blow up and it's nasty. These dudes sleeping on a job. Hey. He tries to jump at you. Now, bear in mind, if you actually went through this area the first time, um, uh, you basically would be dealing with these guys probably equally fast too, if not faster than me. And that would have been a tragedy if I had fallen into there. Ooh. Okay. The other thing Bonfire Six do that's kind of nice is that they restock these chests. So if there's wood chests around, um, like this one has a Titanite chunk in it, and I, you know, I could always use more Titanite chunks. So if you want, you could actually go around and use Bonfire Aesthetics to farm places for different things. And um, basically, the equivalent of this game now is in uh, is is New Game Plus, which is the, you know, after you beat the game, you can go to New Game Plus. I will be probably using um, some stuff to keep this buff on my weapon, because I feel like um, I will be needing all of the extra damage I can get to fight these guys. The big, the big task here is not necessarily doing damage but not taking damage because they are going to be hurting a lot. Now, inside there you can see him. There is a uh, there's a guy in there. See him? And I will just be spamming this at him because I don't really want to go in there after him. But he the key to him is he's actually afraid of the light. You can see I'm just spamming this dark orb, and it's it's doing damage, but I went through I 
There are a lot of dark orbs there. So, they do take a lot. They're afraid of light, so they'll run away. Um, I've already gone and in my previous one I've lit this area. But I will show you the route that I take through here. So I come through here, take care of this guy, and I could actually... Oh, let's let's um, actually reapply the dark weapon. And I'm going to dual wield this. Got to watch your back. I don't know if you saw the swords, but there's a guy behind you. And there's also a guy behind you. Ah. But they're not too bad. And then there's also this dog. We can also... If I can hit... No! I couldn't hit him. I just couldn't hit him. That is a shame. Well, I'm wearing a uh, item that we found later on in the game. This ring of life protection. And it nullifies death, but it breaks. So eh. It's a good what it's a good item, but I basically So I basically don't die and don't lose souls. Um but it breaks. I like it, but now I have to go through this area again. <sighs> All right. Well, now that I've been through it, though, and I kind of explained a little bit of that area, I'm just going to run straight there. And ooh, I like to juke him out with that. Ooh. Come on. There we go. Hey, guy. Now he will actually uh, chase you down. And he can be he can be kind of a pain. So if he if he starts like running at you, just uh, kind of roll away at the last second because he actually will kind of fake attack you for a bit, and then eventually just run up and, and attack you. All right. Well, hmm. I'm gonna go this way. So these is the shield guys are the only ones like it. So they, you see how he he was running at me there. Oh, I was gonna try to swing at the dog. These dogs, man. Come on. Okay, there. He's dead. Cool. All right. So to light this area up, you come over here and you basically put a key into the Pharos lockstone there, and that should take care of that. In here. There are some guys that you can kill. Uh, I always like to try to backstab the first one just because. Then, oh my gosh. He attacks so fast. Oh, man. Alright, this is, this is the equivalent of New Game Plus, so keep that in mind. So, there's uh, two, more, two more deaths on record. Uh, I'm going to probably fast forward this next part. Just, um... Yeah, so I'll see you when we get back caught up. And fast forward, engage. All right, and we're back. Um, yeah, died again on the way there. That was not cool. Um, oh, here. All right, so here's another ring of life protection. Boom. I think this is actually where I found the one I'm wearing. Um, I can pop that on again. Now it's not. Now that I'm hollow, it's not gonna save me from uh from hollowing again. Like I I won't like become human, but 
it will prevent me from hollowing further and I get to keep my souls so that's what that's for now uh, that that over there see that door on the lower lower level um, past where that archer is that is actually blocked off at this point that's why I'm not running that way it's a shortcut for later so instead you want to run up here and if you notice there are a bunch of these guys up here if you don't light that lock stone down there they're all like right around here and they will attack you um, now just because they are afraid of light like you can see that do not mistake that for like the fact that they aren't attacking you because as you can see this one right here alright no not that one there is a point when they will just start running at you if I can see if I can make one mad there you see that little animation that means that they're not gonna stop now so they're gonna come for me and I'm just going to avoid them at all costs let's see come on and let's get you I want them to do that at the same time if I can save them. Okay. huh okay let's see if we can pick up one of these kills come on there we go so they're not impossible to kill by any standards but you don't want you definitely don't want to fight more than one at a time you don't know no I'm just gonna leave him there um, up there though is uh, there are two chests up there and right where that guy the phantom is standing there's also a merchant it's Gavlon and he is the first guy you meet who can actually buy items from the player so get all your stuff together and go and sell the crap you don't want unless you're a hoarder and then you can keep it all yeah, that's basically what there is to that uh, he does sell some nice like poison uh, weapons and daggers and stuff I got these poison daggers off of him um, and then this right here this thing you pull it rings that bell and basically causes this boat to drift into place so that you can walk onto that plank. I've already done that though. Um, it was a really cool animation but one thing I didn't notice until I recorded um, not all of the cages are lit which I thought was interesting. Yeah, some. So you can't go that way. I don't recommend it. There are just two more of those beasts in there and right now I'm playing on New Game Plus and I don't want to deal with that crap. In here there are two sleeping guys I'm not gonna attack them but you guys will behind them you can see a chest it has an Estus flash shard and over there there's an item all these jars are poison though so you don't want to do that behind them you can see a wall you can break that down by just hitting it oh crap wrong side of the door open open I love how they're... Can I close it like this? Yeah. Good night, guys. Okay. I love how you can just do that. Um, Let's catch one of these guys. So you can usually catch them while they're in their little I'm afraid of the sun animations. And you can kill one pretty quick. And then... Come on. I need more stamina. Yeah. Alright. So you can tell they're just scared. Um, they'll run back into here, and once they're in here, they will start attacking you. They will also do that thing where they get pissed off and will attack you regardless of light level. So, all right, what you want to do is once you drop down and you gather the Estus shard, you want to come this way. You want to kill this guy, and hopefully he doesn't kill me because those guys have been like insta bursting me. And here. Uh, you will pull this lever, it will raise the bars, and you will gain access to that shortcut. Now, I'm hollow, and I don't want to be hollow because behind me, there's a summon sign. This is Lucatiel, who we just talked to in the other character. I recommend summoning her. She will be useful in the next boss fight. Hopefully she doesn't go and attack that guy. Come on. Come on, Luca. Eh? 
Come in. All right, cool, cool. She's not gonna aggro him. So you can bring her down this way. Take it slow because you can actually lose her, um, and she won't know what to do. She'll get stuck right here and not know where you went. So, come this way. See, she's kind of all right. There we go. Once she's down here, though, I haven't had a problem with her. Oh, did I speak too soon? That's one way to get down. All right, she's going for that guy down there. There's also these two guys waiting for ambushes. So grab some daggers or whatever and just poke them off. And that's how I deal with that. Let's continue. Up there uh, is where the magic trainer is. You can speak to him if you have, I believe, eight intelligence or more. I don't remember if I had eight intelligence at this point. I probably did actually, because I had the hexes, right? I think I did. Yeah. Ooh. Alright, so this is the only in new game plus mode or bonfire aesthetic mode. Looks like there is a phantom. So I'm going to actually Whoa oh, okay then. Ooh. Okay, so that's a thing that happened. Um, all right, I'm gonna just cut and run myself and get back there because that was kind of that was kind of crappy. You can see I'm still human because of the Ring of Life protection. I'm gonna go repair those rings. I'll be back. All right, guys, I'm back. Uh, after a few, like one or two attempts, I managed to cheese everybody out else here. Um, so there's only the Dark Phantom left, so I summon Lucatio, and, uh, I guess we'll try to take this guy on. I'm planning on basically letting Lucatio do her thing, while I just sort of, oh, nope, no, that didn't work. Alright, so Lucatio, you, you take him out, you take him out? Actually, I could, if I can lock on, come on. Two, three. I got poison arrows, and there they go. Okay, that should really help this fight. I think. Don't want to die. Oh, so he can hit behind him. It's very weird. All right, there we go. We got him. Now, when you burn that bonfire aesthetic, I will say this: the souls you get are so much higher than when you go through here the first time. So, reasons for using buff aesthetic? Yeah. Alright, let's be smart about this. Let's uh, power up a dark weapon. Luca Teal's with us. Uh, I've already had her win this one before with us. But, you know, it's not bad to have her here. And this is the Flexile Sentry. Now, that's what I was afraid of. These guys here are not supposed to spawn in the traditional game. You can tell why, oh gosh. Maybe two deal with yours already. Alright, I'm healing up. I'm just going to Come on, hold on, come on, deal with him. Yes! Okay. I think we could deal dealt with her guy. So the way you want to do this fight is you wait until this guy basically hits Lucatil X number of times. Two, three, yep. And then you just wail on him for a second. And... And... There's a three hitter. He usually does some sort of power attack for his third hit. Um, or a second hit. And after just playing, you'll you'll get a feel. All right, come on, Lucas, you. He's not doing too hot. After uh, if she goes down, then I'll definitely show you guys how I deal with this. And my fire is really at risk. Hmm. Three hits. Do I want to let it... Oh. Alright, so the swordsman came after us. That's fine. I'm going to switch to the... Oh, gosh. 
There. Okay. So I like to use this beam. And what this will allow us to do is kind of bait out his attack. Oh, come on. Alright. No, that wasn't, that wasn't the best part. I guess um, also the longer this goes on, I believe the higher the water level rises. Alright, this three hits? No? Oh gosh, I tried to dodge that, but it didn't really work. Let's drink this. Oh, jeez. I guess that goes over your shield. So I did have my shield up, so that's a little disappointing. Oh, stagger. Alright. Get a hit in there. Off that. Done, guys. Get a couple hits. Finish it up. Yeah. All right, that fight. I will tell you. I will say, it's a lot more interesting after a bonfire static. Um, you get the flex out soul sentries, a uh, sentry soul. Yeah. And uh, that's pretty much the fight. Um, like I said, longer you're in here, the higher this water level goes up. Um, you can see it rising. I think is it still rising? Maybe. Hard to tell. Yeah, I think it is. I think it's still rising up. So, um, yeah, and once you're in this water, it is really hard to move. So, keep that in mind. As the longer the fight goes on, the harder this is going to be. Um, you you guys, on your first playthrough, do not worry about dealing with those little guys. Uh, they don't appear in the first run. In here, really important item, you will find... I don't have it on me. The uh, pyromancy flame. I have it in my inbox, my storage box. Um, it allows you to use pyromancies, which don't cost any sort of int or faith. Although I think faith boosts fire damage. But yeah, so if you're running a warrior build, it's a sorcery that doesn't require extra extra work. So be sure to pick that up before you click this. This um, this place is pretty cool. The idea was that there was um a big scare about the undead and so they grabbed this boat and set up the flexile sentry to basically ferry the um, undead that they're picking up to the lost Bastille which is where we're gonna go um, and you know this this just ferried it back and forth and they were kind of mercenaries that just did this um, and eventually you know, they were just basically trying to lock up all the undead because they didn't understand what the undead curse was. Now, you end up right here, right outside. Um, you can't get through there at all, and it's, it's death if you jump, so don't even try. Um, there's nothing down there or anything, um, so don't worry about it. I still don't think there's... Yeah, see, like, there's nothing under the bridge or anything. Um, basically, they get over to the Lost Bastille, which we can't actually see right now and um, lock away the undead. The, or the fun part about the whole story is that they actually became undead themselves. So, um, you know, that's, that's just kind of interesting. That's kind of true for a lot of these areas. Like, they did stuff to basically counter the fact that people were becoming undead, and then the people who were doing this became undead. So, yeah. Now, when you first get here, um, you don't have to worry about this cage, you know, not being here. Um, it will just be there like this when you walk in. So just walk up, grab it here. Now, if you want, there is a way to get right there that item. I don't think it's that. I don't know if it's an item that's really worth it. But basically, when this is going down, you want to. You want to hop. You want to basically activate it, then run out, and while it's going down, hop back on the top right there of it, and then you'll be able to get to that item. There is 
an item right there. You should pick that up. This uh, lever, like the one downstairs, just make sure that you can always get this to come where you want it to. And then you head this way, and we are in the Lost Bastille. This is the, um, there's an item in here. Pick that up too. Um, there is an, uh, yeah, what am I saying? This is the main way into the Bastille. So, for those of you who were wondering why I just didn't go the other way that the Pursuer went, it's because this is the main way. Um, and we'll be going this way. Here's a bonfire. And, yeah, I think that's, that's pretty much it for this episode. I uh, hope you liked that whole bonfire aesthetic thing. Um, it's something that, uh, there's another hide, hide night up there. It's something that I probably won't do very often, but it was fun, um, for that part. That is where we're going eventually. But, um, like I said, I've already pre-recorded some episodes, um, and it goes in a different direction than the Lost Bastille. We're gonna, we're gonna break from the Lost Bastille for a bit and go someplace else. Um, so I hope you enjoy those episodes. I'm gonna be gone over the holiday weekend. Um, it's gonna be pretty fun. I'm going up to Portland to visit my brother. So, uh, hopefully all of that goes pretty, pretty smoothly. It'll be the first time I'm actually traveling by myself. So, it should be good. And like I said, I've already, um, there's like a preview of the places I've been. I won't I won't go over them, but they're uh, they're there. And when I get back, we'll continue on where that's going. But uh, that's I'm trying to think of how many episodes I have. I think I have like six or seven um, total episodes recorded. So this is like number five. So woo! Glad I could redo that for you guys. Um, just to show you, I have. This is the inbox system, um, the Fluxile uh, Sentry Soul, and then we're going to add to it the Fluxile Sentry Soul. And the skeleton, the thing you just saw there, uh, that's that's for later, so don't worry about that. Like I said, I have I have a lot more bosses than, uh, than in the, the current episode, so don't worry about that. Hope you enjoy. Hope there's not another problem in the next couple episodes I render and uh, I will see you guys later peace out have fun stay in school all that good stuff bye